Hello and welcome back. When I was a child and in, in my teens, we'd set our carrots first of June and then after three or four frosts in the fall, we would pull them up. They would have grown well and uh, no problem. We could store them in the cellar, it was nice and cool. There is a buffer zone. Plants will deal with a certain range of variables. But back in 2018, I guess, people started complaining here that they're having trouble with germination of their carrot seed. And I've been keeping records. It took me about three years. I was looking back over my records, uh, particularly the precipitation. And I realized June was being awfully dry. I had to back up my planting time by at least two weeks. And depending on the weather, I could back it up three weeks, so I'm planting carrots then by at least by the middle of May. And that was fine. I had good germination again. And then this year, something different came up. Something totally unexpected. And I'll bring you over and I'll show you with this plant here. So as I'm saying, these are planted in the middle of May. And here it is, October the 7th, and no sign of a frost in sight. The two week forecast don't have frost. And it was over a week ago now I'd say. I looked over and I seen this. It's a carrot bolting. It hasn't put on a flower yet. It's right there. We've got a flower head just starting now. That's not a carrot from last year. That's one that I planted this spring and it has bolted. I always thought that the carrot had to go through a true winter in order to bolt, but apparently not. So then I was doing my walkabout as I do on another day and I come across this. This is definitely not a left behind carrot because this is from a seed from that seed plant we grew last year. And the flower it is a lot further along there. So now, this is a little nerve wracking. This is a climate change issue, and I think I said before, where I live, due to the modifying effects of the ocean right alongside, we wouldn't get near as big a impact from climate change. But it's showing up. And of course this year we had the marine heat wave just offshore too, so that don't help matters. What I'm worried about is will the root on this one now be lower quality? rotten. What will cause that? I'll go over and get the other one and see what that's like. This one's not rotten. He's got that long big flower stalk on him. Nice and solid. Guess I should have brought it with a knife as well. I got the carrot peeler here. The vegetable peeler, whatever you want to call it. And we will peel this and see what the quality is like. That part wasn't good. It's rather tasteless. 
and turning woody. So, let's pull up this one next to him, next to this one that I had gotten rotten. See what I got. That's rotting as well. It's a big carrot. Well, it's just rotting there in the ground. So every carrot has to come up. Let's see what it's like. That one split. But it might be edible. This one got a little split here, but other than that, it looks perfectly fine. Let's see. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll leave the camera on, and I'll take up these carrots, and if there's anything special, like another rotten one, I'll lay out the rotten ones there, and any other special things I will record up close. Other than that, I'll just pull them up and take the tops off and put them in the bucket. Another split one. Perfectly fine. Ah, uh, now these are beautiful. I'm gonna bring you over. Let's have a look at this. Need to sit down. These stop in a really blunt end, and then they have this little curly Q thing sticking off the end, you see. That's Scarlet Nantes. So I'm getting a lot that looks beautiful hopefully they don't have any signs of uh, starting to bolt reason why I'm wearing gloves is that I want to wipe the excess dirt off them if I pull up any and it's got a bunch of dirt on it Every one of them. Right now, this bed is starting out to be the best carrot herbs ever, and I've had some good carrot herbs.
Now, the difference with this year as opposed to the previous five years, um, remember I said the dunes were getting dry. This year we had a cold, wet June. I could have planted them up in June of this year and they would have germinated just fine. But I did plant them in the middle of May just because of the going by the previous years, right? Oh, first funny looking one. Look at the size of that thing. First tiny one, actually is not the first tiny one, I think I add another one. Oh, that's not good. So. Something went wrong with that one, and because I'm getting so many good ones, I guess I'm going to just put that right in the compost. This one's cracked, but it'd be okay. Quite the jungle of plants here. Oh yeah, so I didn't finish what I was saying, eh? I uh, do that often. Anyway, we did have cold wet June. July came in, it was stinking hot and humid. But uh, August come in, it was kind of an average August. In the end, we add 200 millimeters more of precipitation during this growing season than we had in the previous four or five. Multiple one, but each shoot is actually nice. It's got uh, four shoots. Okay, you know what? I'm thinking I've got an animal problem. And it was eating the tops of the carrots. Not very many, but it did do some. I think that's uh, what the problem is there. <clears throat> I 
Now, the question would be, why would it eat the tops of some and not others, right? Look at that, look at that. Man, I got some big carrots this year. There's three carrots here growing right together. But they didn't wrap around each other quite often when that happens. They'll wrap around each other, but they didn't. So that's another thing I'm really pleased with too, eh? And it might help um, grow bigger carrots, is that I used the pipe and the little container on my side. And for most of them, they get one seed down. But then even if two or three, I don't have to thin it. So these carrots are not disturbed from the time the seed goes into the soil till the time I harvest them. So whatever the problem was, it had started on this one, just a little bit. So this is still good. So that's actually a relief that it wasn't the environmental conditions, it was some kind of a critter, whether it be sow bug or a slug. It doesn't look like something a field mouse would do, so I'm guessing either sow bugs or slugs. And we've had an awful lot of slugs this year. Yeah, as I said, no frost in sight. The room that I have that cools down when an outside cools down, it's still running at 16 degrees. But I do have an idea of where to put these to keep them cool. I wonder if there's anything else down there. This will one will right beside it. Yeah. Somehow it got nipped off. That's the rest of it.
I don't know if there's any more carrots hiding in there, but they would be smaller. And since I let the tomato, own dear tomatoes, and that Swiss chard grow up in that, the carrots were. held back by that and I still got seven gallon bucket right full of carrots from this one bed wonder what's going to happen with the other bed you'll see here in just a minute however the first thing we have to do is weigh this bucket Comes to 35 pounds. Take off two pounds for the bucket, and you're at uh, 33 pounds or 15 kilograms. I'm going to leave that bucket right there because when I'm done with this bit, I'll poke in among and see if there's any more carrots that I can get there. I gotta turn you off and go get another bucket. Let's start looking up close, see what's coming out of this bed. Short and stubby. Quite fat, but not long. First normal one. More of a Chantenay type. I'll go find the uh, sign and see what kind of carrots these are. Well, I put a sign there back in the spring, I'm sure I did. But I don't see it now. But it certainly looks like a Chantenay type carrot. This really big top one here. And you see, that's the way Chantonese go. They, they can get really big at the top and then they taper all the way down to a fairly narrow point. These, if you heard of the trick when you're pulling your carrots, you push down first and then pull up. It does much better with these because of that taper. It's always a disappointment when you get them split. If you get one split like this, then wash them right away and then use them first because you can get the soil off them right away you let that soil dry on and then you're cutting away a lot more of your carrot to make sure you've got all the soil not as long but I mean that's an amazing carrot though
Now I don't need to put you back a little bit. probably remember that I didn't get perfect germination and so there was a few spots here where I re-sowed that's why there's some um, Nantes type carrots among these Smaller ones got to be used first because they'll be the first ones to dry up. Oh, the number of roots to grow is along a tomato plant, hey, wherever it touches the soil, it'll send out roots. That's why you can plant your tomato plants deep to get it more of a root system if you still want to uh, grow it vertical. So one thing we're learning here is that uh, the Nantes type carrots seem to do better with uh, competition. They grew better right in close to the plants, whereas these Chantenay type ones are much reduced in size due to the volunteer tomato plants and that growing up around them. And looking among the other plants there, the carrots are quite small, which would be expected. They're growing under the shade of the other plants. So I decided that I would give that up and, I mean, little tiny things, right? Maybe they'll grow, weather depending. So with the Chantenay type carrots that were in this bed, I've got a full five gallon bucket. Let's see how much they weigh. So I have 32 pounds total, take off uh, 2 pounds for the bucket, you got 30 pounds or uh, 13 and a half kilograms. So now I got 35 pounds out of 
this bed and you can see this big Swiss cherry plant and these tomato plants um, I built it a third of the bed so out of two thirds of the bed I got 35 pounds with the Chantonese I got just a few from that end, not very many, and a little bit right here. Uh, maybe once again, two thirds. And I got 30 pounds. So that's two thirds and two thirds. So we got another two thirds left of a bed. If I had not let those volunteers grow, we could guess another 30 pounds. So we're up to 90 to 100 pounds of carrot out of the two beds. I believe I've done that one year before as well. 50 pounds of bed, 30 square feet. Uh, talking one and two thirds of a pound per square foot. And that is pretty good. I am particularly happy with that carrot harvest. I don't think I uh, need more than what I got, 65 pounds. So it was okay that I let those grow. I've got a few squash out of it and uh, a few tomatoes. So uh, very good harvest from those two beds. I tried them after I got them in and sorted out. Apart from those three or four rotten ones and the one that had gone woody, they were all perfectly tasty. I had some that were cracked, but not very many. And I shall see you in the next one.